In this problem, we're told only two horizontal forces act on a three kilogram body that can move over a frictionless floor. One force is nine newtons acting due east and the other is eight newtons acting 60 degrees north of west. What is the magnitude of the body's acceleration? So let's draw an image to show what's going on here. So we have this uh, three kg body. I'm just gonna draw a box because I think it's easy to see it. So this body's gonna be three kilograms and we know one force acting on it is going to be 9 newtons acting due east. So this is north, this is east, this is south, this is west. So it's going to be acting this way, right? pushing it this way, 9 newtons. Then we also have another one, 8 newtons, right? but it's going to be acting 60 degrees north of west. So you can draw this in different ways, but I'm just going to draw it like this. So just draw it going out like this, and then 62 degrees. It's going to be something like this. So imagine it going like this. And then this right here is going to be 62 degrees. And then this one's going to be 8 newtons. So this force, 8 newtons. And so now that we have it drawn, let's go ahead and solve. So what is the magnitude of the body's acceleration? So keep in mind, uh, the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. So notice how we're given the mass. And we need to find the sum of all the forces in order to find acceleration. So that's what we got to do first. And so the way you should do that is by splitting up in two directions. So notice how this is a vector, right? And because uh, it has magnitude and direction. And so what I like to do is split them up in the x and in the y direction. So that's how we're going to do that and solve for this. So what we want to do is split this up, right? So this force that's going at an angle into two directions. So we want to find the y component and the x component. And then we're going to add them together separately. And then we can use that to find the total. So I'm going to split this up like this. So imagine it's like a line like this, right? A triangle. Actually, I'm going to draw it over here. So. Here's our triangle. And so this is 62 degrees. This is 8 newtons. And then this is going to be the y component and the x component. Because what we're going to do is add the x components together and then add the y components. So let's find the y component of the force and the x component of this force. The way we do that is with trig. So we know the sine of an angle, 62 degrees, is equal to, we know sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite side is y I labeled. You can label it whatever you want y over uh, the hypotenuse, which is 8. So if we want to solve for that side, just multiply both sides by 8, right? That'll get, rid that'll get rid of it. So y is going to be equal to 8 times the sine of 62. So keep that in mind. And then let's do the x. So the x is going to be, you use cosine. So cosine of your angle, 62 degrees, equals x, right? So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is uh, this side right here, the adjacent side to our angle over the hypotenuse. So x over 8, so 8. So it's going to be 8 times the cosine of 62 for uh, this direction. So let's think about the total forces. So I'm going to write it like this. So this is going to be our x direction. This is going to be our y direction. So in our x direction, what forces do we have? So we have this 9 newtons going this way. And then we have uh, 8 times the cosine of 62 going this way. Right? And so they're going opposite ways. So we have to subtract them from each other. So 9... So you want to you want to find the you want to find the difference between them two. So you're going to subtract so nine minus eight times the cosine of sixty two, and that right there is going to be your force in the x direction, right? So if you go ahead and do that, nine minus eight times the cosine of sixty two, you're going to get five point two four newtons. So that's going to be in the x direction. Now we want to do it in the y. So keep in mind there's only one force acting in the y, which is this one. So all we got to do is just take this one, right, our y direction one, which is eight times the sine of sixty two, and that's going to be it in the y. So 8 times the sine of 62, go ahead and do that, you'll get 7.06 newtons. So now we basically just have 5.24 going this way and 7.06 newtons upwards, right? So now what we want to do is combine them into one, right? So the, we do this by, um, right, we're going to use Pythagorean theorem. So if you imagine it like a triangle, so if we do it like this and this, this is going to be the y, right? So 7.06, this is 5.24. So we're trying to find this, right? Because it's going to be at some angle because we've got an angle here. And so that's what we got to find. I'm going to label this C, pretend this is A and this is B. And so we're going to use Pythagorean theorem to do that. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared, right? So this is C. If we want to get just get C, square root both sides. So the square root of this equals C. So we just got to square both of these numbers, add them, and then square root it, and that'll give us C. So go ahead and do that. C equals the square root of 5.24 squared plus 7.06 squared. 
If you do that, you're going to get 8.79, and I'm going to round it to 8.88, or 8.8. .8. So 8.8 .8 newtons, right? That's going to be the force acting on this, right? So the sum of all the forces. So remember uh, the thing, sum of all the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. We're trying to find the magnitude of the body's acceleration. So now we have the force, 8.8 .8 equals the mass, 3 equals, or times A. So 8.8 .8 equals 3A. If we want A, just divide by 3. So A equals 8.8 .8 divided by 3. If you do that, you're going to get 2.933. And I'm just going to round to the tenths place here. So 2.9. And then the units you're using, since this is in newtons and this is in kilograms, it's going to be meters per second squared. So it's going to be about this. So your answer is going to be 2.9 meters per second squared. And hopefully you found this video useful.